Hi, I'm Miriam Joy and welcome to my studio. We're doing another tips and technique video today and we're going to be working with Quick Aluminum. This is the latest in our Quick Wood products and this is a lot of fun and I'm really enjoying working with the Quick Aluminum which is basically a silver. The, the one thing about Quick Aluminum is it has a short dry period of time so we want to work with projects that only take a little bit of time. With it and the Quick Copper they tell you there's between five and seven minutes so we really want to keep these projects short and quick so remember that when you start to work with it and only cut off the amount for just the amount that you're using so if you're making two earring feathers only use enough for the one earring at the time so we're going to be doing the silver feathers and number one rule when you're working with quick wood of any kind because it's hard and it dries rock hard take off your jewelry so we want to make sure that we do that and then the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to use my vegetable cooking spray and I'm not going to spray it, well I could spray this onto this because we're not going to put this onto a gourd or anything. It, normally I spray it onto my hands first because I want the quick wood to be able to stick but it really we don't have to worry about it sticking. You can put this on to your gourd as well. It doesn't matter. So we're going to take our quick um, aluminum and I have a smaller piece that I'm working with here because I'm ending up a roll of this and I'm going to take this and I want to do a probably a little bit bigger feather so that you can see it. We'll do a necklace and so you get the basic ideas and you want to make sure that you remove all of that plastic and sometimes on those end pieces it's harder to tell. So because if you're working with it and you start to cut it or something and you realize there's plastic in there it's really hard to go back and fix it at that point in time. So I'm going to knead this really really well and I'm going to do things a little bit differently. We're going to kind of get that in an oblong shape. And you can do it out with your fingers, but I also have little rollers that help as well. It's going to be a little bit bigger feather than I was planning on, but that's okay. We're going to go with it. Now I like to use my business cards to do my lines. I've tried cutting them, I've tried all kinds of different things and I always come back to this because I can make my lines. Now on this one I'm going to do instead of one line down the middle I'm going to try and do one on each side. We'll see I may have that too big and you know what I'm trying this too big I'm gonna go back to my original plan of just a smaller feather I had too much there it's hard on the end piece see this little piece right here if you have some quicksilver and you're not going to use it by putting it in there it keeps the air out of it and it will extend it just a little bit of time. Another thing that you can do if you're not going to use it and I think I'll show you that I'm going to walk away from my table and I am going to grab one of my molds and I had talked about this on an earlier video if you have a piece that you're not going to use simply come over to your mold and make a shape that you'll use on something later that way you can simply just put it in there and you've used up up your quick aluminum and you have that for another project so we're going to take that and I'm just going to let that dry for another project for later so I didn't waste that. Now get back to this guy because we don't want to waste our time because we only have a few minutes with him. There, that's more the shape, the size I wanted. But that gives you an idea, if you have extra, what to do with it. And I'm going to be doing a little video with flowers and stuff too, so you could even do that. Now, like I was talking about, using my business card, 
And coming in here, and we're just going to shape that as a feather. You could also cut it out with your hobby knife if you needed to as well, but I prefer doing it this way. And I'm going to try one more time, two down the line. That way you have that center piece. And I'm going to do the same thing with my card to put my lines in. You can come in when you're doing the earrings with your hobby knife and make these smaller. And that really works as good too. But we're putting all these little lines in. And another thing that you can do on these bigger ones that I'm not going to show you today is you can come back in with your uh, black paint and your little tiny liner brush and you can go into these um, lines, just the, the bottom of the lines, and that will even bring out more um, different layers of the feather and even make it look nicer. All right, so we have that feather there. The next thing we're going to do, though, is we're going to add some shape to it. And by doing that, we're going to come in with our hobby knife. And what I do is I just slice it. Now, if this was foil, I'd have you remove a piece. But we don't need to remove it because we can just kind of wiggle one up and one down. Now, push these back in and kind of clean this up as nice as you can. And... This gives our feather a looser feel instead of a heavy feel, which you want feathers to do. And I'm going to do one more. Now, probably do odd. You always want to try and think about odd, not even. You actually could do three on three on here, and it would be kind of odd it wouldn't be even because you would think about those three so you can always kind of figure things like that out and I'm just going to clean and keep these ends tucked in you don't want them sticking out you don't want them sharp and see how neat that's really starting to look already now before this dries we want to make sure that we come in I'm using an awl and I'm going to poke my hole into my feather here. And I want it pretty good size because I actually want to put my jump ring in. And what we're going to do is I am going to let this dry for just a couple minutes. So I'm going to turn it off and we will come right back and show you how to put the jump rake in and attach this um, right to the feather to make the necklace. So join me back in just a couple minutes. Okay, we've let our feather dry and one thing I forgot to mention before it is dry, I like to add some shimmer or embossing powder to it and we take, I used a pearl or a silver just to add some highlights to this. I really think it helps it. Always dip your brush into the lid and just brush it on. And like I said, you want to do that when that is still wet so that it sticks to that. And then you get all those bright, wonderful colors, even helping it to look more like silver. And now that we're dry... Pick, we're going to come in with our jump ring and we're going to open it up and I use two tools, one to open on each side. We're just going to open this right up and one to hold it while we put this jump ring through. And then once we get the jump ring through... Sometimes if your necklace won't go through it, you need to put the necklace in it and then close a jump ring that I know my necklace will fit through this. And you always want to make sure that you close this very tight because that can that's where your necklaces break. If your jump ring has an opening and something can slide out of it, you want to be real careful with that. And, Sometimes just by pinching it right on that jump ring part just tightens it. All right, so we have the jump ring on there. And then we're simply just going to thread the necklace through it. 
I have some samples of using it with black or different kinds of things so there's all kinds of things that you can put on that. Now on the smaller earrings we add two jump rings and the reason we do that is so that it hangs straight because the, your earring part is forward and if you had the other part jump ring that's forward it would hang sideways so simply just put two jump rings on and these earring pieces just simply open just pull them to the side put your two jump rings on close that back up again make sure that's nice and secure and then you have your wonderful little feather earrings as well. You should varnish these with one coat of varnish just to hold the embossing powder or the um, the uh, shimmer powder on to your feather so that it wears nice and doesn't rub off. And on this one, I, you can see I added the black cording and here it has a little bit of the liner work and I put a line of real small clay down the middle of that just to make that but see how I kind of bent my feather and kind of gave it shape and you can do this by putting it on your large gourds as well too to give your feather there you can make them that way but so it looks like it's not just a flat feather it gives it some shape and everything so I hope you enjoyed this little class and had fun learning our silver feathers today if you have any questions about anything we did here please email me at art at miriamjoy.com and for the quick aluminum or any of the other tools that we may have available please visit my website at miriamjoy.com there's also a video link to other videos there as well and also on Facebook at Miriam Joy Gourd Creations. I post um, a different gourd every day or gourds that I'm working on in progress so you can see how to do them. So thank you for joining me today and God bless.